This is an introduction to STEM programming with Python 3, Chapter 3, Getting Values from Users. I'm James Imbrano, PhD from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this video lecture. In this video, I'm going to cover the input function in Python and how to get a string value from a user. Um, we'll also talk about how to convert a string to an integer or a float if that's what you really needed from the user, and how to convert an integer or a float back to a string value so that you can concatenate, and do, concatenate it and do other things with it. Getting a string from a user. To get a string from a user, we use the input function in Python. Input will return the string that the user actually enters um, you may assign a value, or you may assign the value that input returns to a variable so your program can use it. Now, there are two forms of, of input, one without a prompt that just input open close parentheses, and that will display nothing, but it'll stop the program and ask the user to input something. Or you can put a prompt in the quotes in the parentheses of your input, and that will print an idle or print in whatever um, development environment you're using and stop and kind of prompt the user and encourage them to type something in. I always suggest using the prompt. Here we see a very simple sample program in Python. It's two lines long and you can see line one, A equals input with the prompt, enter your name greater than. And then on line two, we say, it's uh, great to meet you and the name that they entered. So you can see the output above, enter your name. And I typed in Jim because that's my name. And it says, it's great to meet you, Jim. A very simple little Python program. But here you can see the use of the input statement and the string the user typed in. Python has a function built in called the int int function. The int function will convert whatever's passed to it to an integer value if it can. So if you pass int a string with a number, an integer number in it, the int function will return an integer number that you could then do mathematics to. If you pass int a float value, int will convert it to an integer chopping off the decimal part. One bit of caution though, if you send int something, the int function, something that can't be turned into an integer value, it will blow up. It will throw an error and your program will immediately stop running. Now in some subsequent chapters, in some future chapter, you'll, you'll see how we can trap that error and keep your program running. But at least at this point, you know, if you get the error that it can't convert, you know why it can't convert what the user typed. There's another function in Python, just like int, only it's called float. And you know what it does? It turns whatever you pass to it to a floating point number. If you send it a string that contains a number, it's going to try to convert it to a float. If you pass it an integer, it'll try to convert it to a float. And it will again throw an error if it can't do the conversion. So let's take a look here at changing a string to a number. The program over here says W equals input, enter your weight in pounds. Then um, on line two, you can see that we try to convert the string W to the integer W. W equals int W takes the W the user inputs, the one in parentheses, and converts it to an integer and then saves it back into the same variable. But now the variable, instead of containing the string that the user typed in, it contains a number. That's a little tricky and I wanted to show that. Um, you could have used a different variable name if you wanted. On line three, you then ask the user, what percentage of your weight do you want to lose? And we then convert that to a float on line four. Line five, their new weight would be their existing weight minus the amount they wish to lose. And it then prints their new weight. You see up above the first time I ran the program, 
I entered my weight as 200 pounds. I said I'd like to lose 5%, and 5% of 200 is 10. Yeah, something like that. And, oh, but yeah, and you can see that your new weight would be 190 pounds. Now, the second run, you can see that instead of entering a number, I entered the word none you, because you, none of your business how much I weigh. Um, and when I typed in none you, because it's not a number, we get this beautiful error that says trace back do 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 da, 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 change string invalid inter literal for base 10. So it's saying that it couldn't convert the value that the user typed none you into a base 10 integer number. So there's the error that you get when you when you type in a number that's or when you something try to convert something that's not a number into a number. The third function that I wanted to talk of the fourth function actually input int float. And so the fourth function that I want to talk about is the str function. The str function does what you think it might do. You pass it something and it works by turning whatever you pass it into a string. So if you pass str an integer, it's going to give you a string with that number in it. Or a float, it's going to give you a string with that number in it. Or if you pass it another string, it'll just return that same string right back to you. But the str combination, the str function comes in handy when you want to concatenate numbers to strings. You can't do that normally. You have to convert the number to something so that you can concatenate it, or if you want to do other kinds of things with numbers. So the str function is also a really handy function to remember that it exists. Here you can see the str function just in a little simple program. The first line sets the variable a equal to the integer, 99. The second line prints a times 10, which 99 times 10 would be 990. But if we convert it to a string, string a times 10 would then be to convert the string, would be to repeat the string 10 times. So that's why it printed um, 20 nines up above instead of uh, 990, because it converted the string, it converted 99 integer to a string 99, 99 and then repeated the string 9, 9, 10 times, giving us 20 nines. This concludes this short video presentation. Remember, it's copyright 2019 by James M. Renault, Ph.D. You can contact me at jrenault at shawnee.edu with any questions. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike 4.0, international license, and I'd like to say thank you for, uh, for watching.